Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday, Heartbeat Nation. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Sabrina. Hey, Heartbeat Troy. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. I pray you guys received sweet sleep on last night. Woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this new day. Hey there, Heartbeat Carolyn. How are you this morning? Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts on this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. Hey there, heartbeat Anita, heartbeat Elaine, heartbeat Donald. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And today your daily dosage, hey heartbeat Melodia. Today your daily dosage is closing up our series for this week. Hey heartbeat Dalitha, evict fear from your heart part five. Evict fear from your heart part five. And so we've been talking about the dangers of fear and how fear keeps us out of faith. Fear keeps us from doing the things that God has called us to do. And so we've got to learn now how to evict fear from our hearts once and for all, that we may walk in the will of God for our lives, that we may be always operating in his ways. And so we started out yesterday saying the first thing that we want to do is number one, identify your fear or fears knowing that God will help you, knowing that you're not in this thing alone, that God himself will help you. Number two was renew your mind and switch your brain that God himself is going to help you. You are not alone in this. You can do it with God's help. And so today we're at number three, follow God's voice, do what he says Act on it. Don't just hear the word, but do the word as well. I'm going to say that again. Follow God's voice. Do what he says. Act on it. Don't just hear him. Do exactly what he tells you to do. So let's look at James 1, 22 through 24, the easy reading version. Hey there, heartbeat, Christine. It says this. It says, do what God's teaching says. We can stop right there. Do what God's teaching says. And we all understand this. We've all been children before. And for some of us, parents and grandparents, and that is all you've ever said. Do what I tell you to do, right? That is how we grew up. Do what I say, right? And so God is given that same command. Do what God's teaching says. Don't just listen and do nothing. And so if you just listen and do nothing, you're not even halfway there. You've got to get in the game, right? And and so it says, when you only sit and listen, you are fooling yourselves. Hearing God's teaching and doing nothing is like looking at your face in the mirror and doing nothing with about what you saw. You go away and immediately forget how bad you look. That is crazy, right? And so it's saying this, that when we hear God's word, it is now time to act on it. It's now time to get in the game. No more sitting on the sidelines, just watching the game, but you've got to get into the game. So it says this, hey, Harvey, Yolanda, that when I do the, listen to the word and I don't do the word, it's as if I'm looking in a mirror. I see that their hair is out of place. I see that my shirt isn't right and I simply do nothing about it. I walk away from the mirror forgetting about what I saw. And so it's like this. You know you need help with a situation. You know that God has already given you the instruction. You're just hearing the word, Lord, I want to hear from you. Lord, I want to hear from you. And he's telling you, you're hearing from him. And then it's like you take what you've heard from him. He's told you to stop hanging around this person. He's told you to stop these type of acts that you're doing, but you just listen. You do nothing about it. So it's like you're sitting there waiting on God to move and God is like, I'm waiting on you to move. I told you to stop that. I told you that that was self-destruction. I told you no good is going to come from that. You say you're listening to me, but I'm saying not only do you listen to what I say, you've got to do what I say. So if you want to see wholeness, you want to see this abundant life, you've got to do the word. Simply reading the word, simply listening to me, Monday through Friday, 
and not applying it to your life, look, it's like you're being a fool. You're looking in a mirror. You have everything that you need. All God wants you to get in the game. You're like that person that's on the sidelines yelling at the people that's on the field, telling them to do this and do that. At least they're in the game. So you've got to get in the game. You've got to do what God's teaching says, not just be a hearer of it, but you've got to be a doer as well. Amen. Number four, it says rejoice in the Lord, knowing he is God and he's got you. Rejoice in the Lord, knowing that he is God and that he's got you. Philippians 4, 4 through 7, and I'm reading it in the Passion Translation. It says this, it says be cheerful with joyous celebration in Every season of life. Doesn't that sound like embrace your season? No matter what's going on, you've got to be cheerful. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Let your joy overflow and let gentleness be seen in every relationship for our Lord is ever near. And so no matter what you're going through, no matter what it feels like, God has never forsaken you. He has never left you, but you've got to keep a rejoicing on your lips, a rejoicing spirit. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. It says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Why? Because God's got me. If God is God and God is still on the throne, there is no need to worry. Remember, God has never been defeated. God has never lost a battle. God never will lose a battle. So why worry when God is still on the throne, when God is still in control, when God still calls you his own? He says, I'm your God. You're my people. So if he's still calling you, then there is no need to worry. It says this, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. And so when I'm coming to God, presenting my request, I'm thankful about it. It doesn't matter that I'm not exactly where I want to be, but I'm thankful that I'm not where I used to be. And I'm thankful that I got a future because I can see past my nail. I'm thankful because I have a God that's never left me. I'm thankful because I have a God that has assured me, reassured me that there is no need to be afraid to evict that fear out of my heart because he is with me. Then it says, tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. And so when I learn to rejoice again, I say rejoice. When I learn to have gratitude for the mere fact that I still have life, then it's because of God that I live, move, and have my being. When I begin to have gratitude, it says this, and I'm now able to tell him everything. Every little detail of my life. I'm now able to tell him, hey God, you know, fear is trying to creep up on me, but you told me to not be afraid because you've already gone before me. Lord, I'm really concerned about my job. Lord, I'm really concerned about my child. Lord, I'm really concerned about my future. It says that when I begin to give him every detail of my life, it is then, get this, it is then that this peace that transcends, transcends human understanding, that is the peace that will fall upon me, that will guard my heart and it will guard my mind through Jesus Christ. Going right back to talking about that we've got to learn to depend on him. That is God that we can do all things through. It says, the scripture says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So when I switch my brain and understand that I'm not relying on my strength, I'm not relying on my thoughts, I'm not relying on me, but as I'm relying on the God in me, Lord God Jesus, that I'm relying on that God, Lord God, hallelujah, it takes the pressure off, the restraints of God, now there's no limits, there's no boundaries, all I see is increase all around me, because I've switched my brain, and I understand that all I've got to do is rejoice in the Lord, and again, I say rejoice, that 
is then that that peace of God will fall on me that will transcend all of my understanding. Glory to God. And it will guard my heart and it will guard my mind through Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, those are the four steps on how to evict fear from your heart. You've got to evict fear from your heart so that you can live in the no limits to understand what it feels like to live in God where there's no limits, where there's no boundaries. Stop saying that the sky is the limit. The sky isn't the limit when you are a child of God. There are no limits in him. There are no boundaries. All you have is increase, but you don't experience this. You've got to switch your brain. This is how we evict fear from our hearts. Amen. Hey, listen, that's the daily dosage for today. Evict fear from your heart, part five. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website, GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec while amazing day. Have a spec while amazing weekend. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I will see you right back here Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. with a fresh dosage. For some of you, those that are traveling to Israel, I will see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. as we gather to get all of the information that we need for our trip to Israel. I'm so excited about that. And then mark your calendar in nine more days. Somebody say nine. Nine more days on Sunday, October 1st. We are truly having the gathering of hearts. God wants me whole. We'll be having services on Sunday beginning October 1st. More information, location, all of that, the flyers, all of that stuff is coming. But you want to mark your calendar. It is the gathering of hearts. That's right, Heartbeat Yolanda. Nine more days we will be gathering together to hear what God has to say to us. Again, spec while well amazing day to you, spec while well amazing weekend. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. I'll see some of you tomorrow. Others, I'll see you Monday morning. I love you guys. Hug yourself real tight. That's from me. I love you a bunch.